Hello, this is Benjamin Gordon, a fourth year MD PhD student at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Welcome to this video presentation on Molecular Biology 101. We will be discussing how DNA messages are transcribed into RNA and then translated into protein. This video presentation is part of Survivors Advising Scientists Educational Program. Our mission is to create a bi-directional partnership that connects young investigators with cancer patients, survivors, research advocates, and allies to increase scientific literacy and engagement across the community. I'd first like to take a moment to address the big picture when it comes to genetics and molecular biology. Why do we need DNA? Most of the protein ingredients of our body have a fast turnaround in a matter of hours or days. DNA allows us to store information as a blueprint to keep our identity as our body continues to renew its resources. Moreover, it is a mechanism to pass down information from generation to generation. You could think of genes as the language of life, which is stored in our DNA. I will be talking more about genes shortly. Before we continue, I'd like to return to the slide from a previous video in this series on cellular components made by my colleague, Casey Blaha. In that presentation, Casey talks about nucleus and cytoplasms in the cell. These divisions keeps our cells nice and organized. Since I'm about to discuss how DNA codes for proteins, I will first tell you where these processes happen. DNA and its associated genes are found in the nucleus. Conversely, Proteins are built and assembled in the cytoplasm. Now, let's further define DNA. DNA is a twisted double helix structure, as demonstrated in the pink helix in the figure. Because there is so much information stored in DNA, it is further wound tightly into condensed structures called chromosomes, almost like a molecular filing cabinet, which are found in the cell's nucleus. Chromosomal organization is needed Otherwise, DNA wouldn't be able to fit nicely into the nucleus. Each side of the helix has a sugar backbone that's connected together by four distinct nucleotides, A, T, G, and C. While the backbone is constant, the order of the nucleotides changes from gene to gene. In the language of genetics, you could think of nucleotides as letters, and genes are the sentences. As stated previously, DNA is in the nucleus, but protein production is in the cytoplasm. Then how does DNA code for proteins? The answer lies partly in mRNA, which is a messenger intermediate which starts in the nucleus and then travels to the cytoplasm. As for its structure, think of it as DNA cut in half, as mRNA is not a double helix, but rather a single-stranded structure with its nucleotides a, U, G, and C exposed. Once mRNA travels from the nucleus to the cytoplasm, they then transmit their signal to ribosomes, which are also found in the cytoplasm. To make things a little confusing, ribosomes themselves are made of RNA and proteins. The ribosomes receives the mRNA message and interprets it. However, ribosomes do more than just read the mRNA signal. They also physically assist in protein production by assembling proteins from its building blocks. You can therefore think of them as molecular biology chefs or utility workers as shown by the emojis here. Now, let's put this all together. Because DNA transmits a message, we can think of it as a smartphone with its nucleotides A, T, G, and C as its keyboard, as shown here by our SAS EP smartphone. The ribosomes are tasked with making proteins, which can help determine traits like eye color. First in the nucleus, DNA makes mRNA through a process called transcription. mRNA messages are the smartphone's Wi-Fi signal that sends a text message to the cytoplasm. The ribosomes not only receive the signal, but they also act upon the message by making protein. This last step is called translation. Now let's connect this all to cancer. In cancer, DNA often sends a harmful message, often by sending too little or too much of a message. Please refer to the video modules on oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes when things go wrong to learn more about these types of errors. Here, a harmful DNA message is represented by an ominous green DNA script in our smartphone. In cancer, the smartphone will continue to transmit the mRNA message even if it will have a negative consequence for our body. 
Eventually, a cancer cell is generated when the ribosome gives the cells the protein repertoire it shouldn't have, and it will give it the characteristics of a cancer cell. Please refer to the modules on the hallmarks of cancer to learn what makes a cancer cell a cancer cell. Questions to consider. What is the difference between transcription and translation? What benefit could there be for scientists and doctors to sequence one's tumor to find the nucleotide order? Thank you for taking the time to review video two in the series. Please make sure to check out video three on genes, loci, and alleles. We would like to thank everyone involved in the creation of these videos, including the University of Illinois Cancer Center and all the research and patient advocates that assisted in the review of these modules. Thank you.